Welcome to Wix Triage on October 10th. Uh, not a lot to see here, so let's go ahead and get right into it. I believe this is up to date. We have 657 bugs. You ready to go, Bob? I am ready. All right, all the typey typey. Um, files needed not being, yeah, this was just reported this morning. I don't know why the file's missing suddenly. Um, you can give this to me and put it in 3.8. And I'm an, I was actually looking at that this before the meeting. I don't know what's going on right now. Um, it wasn't a problem a day or two ago, so something happened in between there. Anyway, uh, that'll be mine. Okay. Um, here is an upload archive of icons for Visual Studio 2012 templates. Cool. Interesting. Someone provided templates. Standard elements of Visual Studio. I see. So someone took the... Well, um, interesting. If they look good, I guess we could use them. Our icons probably look a little garish in that extremely flat and monochromatic world of Visual Studio. Um, so, yeah. Do you want that in 3.8? Uh, More of a votive bug than SDK bug, but... Yeah, that's fair. Um, and that I think will require an assignment agreement. Um, that's true. We probably should respond to this person and let them know that we probably do Although if they stole the icons from 2013, I don't know what we do. <laughs> it's basically take um, the icons from Visual Studio and to, I don't. We we need to go look at them, and if they look at all unique from Visual Studio icons, then we need to do something. Yeah, I think um, I'm looking at them now. They're they look kind of cool, actually. All right. Um, and I I forgot. Did, yeah, no, we did have 30, 32 by 32 icons. Um, yeah, they look they look kind of good, and I don't think they share a lot in common with uh, mm. uh, the Visual Studio icons. Jacob points out that the, they came from PSDs, which is Photoshop, oh, yeah? right? So that means that he probably did make them, or she. Um, yep. So we should go follow up with the person and get an assignment agreement, because that probably is the safest thing to do. Yep, agreed. <sighs> All right. Send SH change notify for new file association is added. Well, we don't create file associations. Yeah, this one is... We could write a custom action to do this. Yeah, um, yeah, this one's interesting because um, the, the, the last installer. sentence... Yes. I th well, that's the thing. I think Windows Installer does this. The last sentence talks about a new file association with external programs. So if you're adding associations for things that you're not installing, MSI might not do the right thing. Um, but since we don't do we don't do associations natively, quote unquote. I'm very although, reticent to do this if the Windows installer I mean uh probably doesn't hurt if we did it. Yeah, someone asked about this for, I think, environment variables as well. Although, again, this is something I thought that um, MSI should take care of for these kinds of things. It should. The question is, do we need to give it a little nudge? All right, well, um, where do we want to put it? We could put it in 3x, because it certainly could be fixed there, because it's not going to be a breaking change. Yeah, I I agree with Jacob, though. I think we need more information about what is going on here. All right. I'm, I'm pretty sure with... Um, it seems like the Windows installer should be doing this. Yeah. Um, I'm okay with taking this in, in 3x, requesting... Oh, you know what? The Windows installer might not do it if you just write it all via reg keys. It might only do it if you advertise the extension. Oh, so this is something that we actually might be the cause of. For good reason, but yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, they might not call change notify. In fact, they, they probably don't call change notify if just a bunch of reg keys get written. Sure, sure. What's so, the chance that they actually recognize that? That's probably what it is. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so this is something where if we see an extension... Um, 
say if we uh, if we trans translate the the extension authoring into reg keys, we might need to do this. Yeah, we're going to end up with a runtime custom. Yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. sketchy, sketchy. Yeah. Well, yeah, this, this, I'm I'm fairly okay with this one because this could even be an immediate CA. I mean, no deferred, but sorry, it no, would have to be no deferred. Data. But there's no yeah, there's no data. There's no. All right. We have enough. We can put it in the bug. The implementation will be interesting. I have to think through a bunch of things on the implementation, but that's Agreed. probably what's happening here. Yep. All right. Onward. Wixel file with incorrect namespace. Those are incorrect. There. Really? Wow, that's yeah. pretty sad. It, yeah, we should fix that. It says the Wix namespace. Oh, that's just busted. Yeah, we should fix that. Bad error messages are not okay. We should fix that. Yeah, yeah, Jacob said it needs a better message, error message. And yes, it does need a better error message. Burn allow several instances. Burn to allow several instances of installer. Leads to error during installation on. I assume that's on any of it. Right, that's true. Burn doesn't block this because there's so many different ways of blocking this. Yeah, and also. And burn handles it as well with retries and stuff like that. So I mean. And there's nothing wrong with running multiple installers just to, you know. Now, now, this could be a feature for Wix standard BA to allow you to set some sort of, you know, global blocking mutex type thing, although maybe not using mutex and all that kind of stuff, if you want to make sure that your thing did not do, in, but uh, uh, it's not a bug. It's a, yeah. it's a feature, and the feature does not exist today for real reasons. Yeah, I, uh, it's not that simple. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know that I'd want someone to dictate that. So in my head, the use case is, um, you know, you have a, a more complex BA where you might have to, you know, um, I don't know, choose options, pick a server, stuff like that. I wouldn't want any other installer to say, no, you can't start that process and be going through it while you know, simultaneously installing some prerequisite. Or oh, yeah. No, there's there's a whole lot of UI decisions in how you do this, this the, the prevention of other installers running. There's a whole lot of stuff. Right. So this is definitely a BA problem. This is not. So let's close this bug. It's not a burn bug. It's like a, this is a design decision in burn. And someone could say that you could open a feature against Wix standard BA if you wanted that. But even then, it, I don't. Yeah, you could. But this is, you definitely don't want Burn doing this. Yeah, agreed. And I'd argue that I probably don't want Wix standard BA doing it. Yeah. All right, onward. Second Burn window appears during Aladdin eToken driver installation. <laughs> okay. This sounds like a question that should go somewhere else. How can I attach example project? Well, the other bootstrappers and our own working good. All right, so. How, how would an MSI pull up a burn install? Or second burn window, it doesn't say like what kind of window? I, let's send, this is, this is, let's send this to the discussion list um, and see if we can't get down to a place where like, let's, let's go have a discussion about what they're doing before we open a bug here. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's let's call this, go have a discussion, and maybe there is a bug here, but not from that. Um, variables aren't expanded with toolset.org doc pages. True. So, yes. Oh yeah, you open this right. So yeah, we should fix that. Yes, three X Wix toolset. So that's fine with me. It's a low thing. I mean, it's not great, but we should fix it at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of treating, um, well, this might be a doc bug that uh, we should look at for the chum. Yeah, the, this, these variables aren't used in many places. I think we honestly found one of the very few places it's actually used. Yeah, yeah I remember that page when you did that feature. Right. Um, Can I do that? Okay. I think so. Yeah, maybe. I didn't write most of the doc system before Derek did, so it's old. But yeah, so yeah, we should fix that. I'm fine with that, unless you want it in three eight. 
but yeah. The harvest type was not found in the list of loaded heat extensions. Whoa. Shadow Copy Visual Studio. Having in it. Proc might show that DevM tries to open heat config from the shadow copy. What? Oh, they want you want code base instead of location? Oh. Uh, only in Visual Studio. Uh, cool. I sure that could be a problem. Is this Visual Studio doing the shadowing stuff? I don't know who's doing shadow copy. But it's like it's copying heat.exe. It could, but from the MS Build it works fine. But in Visual Studio it behaves differently. I don't know. This is a crazy way that project systems get loaded inside Visual Studio or inside um, heat and stuff like that. Um, I can kind of see what they're doing with the code base and that kind of stuff, and and the details of location versus code base always are fuzzy in my head because I don't deal with them hardly at all. So anyway, I'd say we should take it. Uh, the question is, do you want it three eight or no? Um, so it looks like that's the fix. So if someone wanted to go do the fix and verify it, they could bring it in pretty easy. Um, so it'd be an easy three X bug that what, if someone got it in the next day or two, maybe could get in three eight, and otherwise. 3.9 or future? Yeah, I guess I'm just... Is this something people are running into all the time? Well, it's... some people are hitting it on the mailing list, too, so... Although it is kind of strange. You'd expect it to happen more often. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it, if that's the fix, that seems like a safe thing to do. Yeah. Um, I'd be okay with that, and... Um, yeah, three eight. Uh, well, all right, your call. I'll let you. Friendly download error message. A friendly message when, when it attempts to acquire the .NET framework because the ability to detect at the moment that oh, that's what .NET framework returns when it gets back an error. What does that translate to? Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's weird. Uh, name not resolved times three for internet when HTTP. Yeah, okay. Oh, and it's not, you see, and the reason it's becoming unspecified errors because it's probably in a different uh, resource DLL than system, and so get system error messages and finding it. That'd be my bet. Oh, that blows. Um, so, yeah, this would be a nice feature. I agree. This would, you know, so I want to go try to come up with a better error message for that. I don't know, maybe it's a, if it comes back unknown from the format message, then you go and search in another set of known DLLs or something like that. I don't know. I, I agree. A better error message would be good. 3x should be built up straightforward. Yeah. Burn install condition not followed for a slipstream. Hey, we're in the older bugs now, right? Yes. I yeah. didn't realize the switch over. How nice. Installer installs an MSI and a slipstream MSP. The install conditions for two modules are different. And I want the MSP installed only in a specific case. However, if the MSI is installed, the MSP seems to get installed even if the install... Oh, my. Oh, that did not get formatted pretty at all. But... Um... It's almost formatted. You see that tick right there? <laughs> Although this is a, an exception message here, right? Anyway. Um, yeah, some, someone should look into that, I think. Uh, 3x? I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, slipstreaming is such a challenging thing, but um, good to understand exactly what's going on there. 
Jacob's confused how he would do that. Yes, if there are two MSI packages, one with the MSP and one without. Well, yeah, except you can see the MSP could slipstream to both MSI packages. And I mean, you could come up with a really complex situation where, like, the MSI packages have different stall conditions and the MSP has an stall condition. And what is the thing that gets all worked out in the end? We may need more information to really know the scenario, how we got into this scenario. But I certainly could believe that somewhere in slipstreaming, it misses one of the install conditions or something like that. Right. Anyway, yes, that will be a fun bug. If the MS, so Jacob, if the MSIs are the same in the same bundle, that's not going to. I don't know how that would work out. So, someone needs to go look at that one. That's not going to be an easy bug, and I don't want to spend too much time trying to get deep into it. It may not be an issue in the end, but probably. By Wix MST, I mean Wix MSP as used here. So someone wants patching targets. Cool. Can you fix the title of this, Bob? No matter what, or unless we just, yeah. Yes, patch transforms. Patching. We should add patching to the Wix targets. Uh, this would be a 4x feature at best, I think. I agree. See the included file for required changes. Interesting. No, yeah, maybe not. Maybe it, there's a way of adding it. I don't know, it could be in 3x or someone to go look at that. Um, oh, the changes are pretty minimal to add an output type. And it's, sorry, it adds an output type of patch mm -hmm. and, and allows it, um, you know, all the output type checks. That's all? Yes. But that's not going to build patches. No. Oh. So, yeah, this is a cool feature. It's going to be hard. <laughs> it's going to be insanely hard. Building patches in MS Build, or uh, with all the special stuff you have to do to find the previous version of the MSI, it's going to be very challenging. Although yes. it's freaking awesome when we finally figure out how to do it. One day we'll figure out how to do it. Um, you could try doing it in 3X, I, uh, or put it in 4X. Uh, your call, Bob. Uh, in MS Build, because I know MS Build has changed so much, um, and I know because <laughs> MS build changes have a way of um, rolling downhill. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm I'm tempted to move anything complex in MS build to to the 4x. I, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Force burn to continue when package failed. So you want a non-vital package? Yeah, except. Why, why is that not what they want here? I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, they want, oh, I see. They want the ability to decide at runtime to make it vital or not? Let the BA decide. I guess. Can you do that? I guess you could change that so that the complete, yeah, see, complete don't return. Oh, it's going to be a breaking change. This is a 4X. I suppose it could be done. It probably could be done. Completes don't usually have a return value because it's too late, but it's we complete. could change it such that you could say you could return like ID ignore to ignore an error or something like that, I suppose. Which then means, and then we could even send a recommended, which would be based off of vital, which means they could then turn around and send back the recommended. Yeah, okay, I could see that working out pretty well. Okay. That could fit in the model, but you can't take it in three because it'll be a breaking interface change. Yep. So yeah, no, that's uh, uh, probably not too hard to do. Kind of a, it's an open question that's come up before about how much can the BA override? Yeah, and, and you know we 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 took a you know we took a stab at it and said this much, right? <laughs> and stopped because yep. allowing everything was the path to insanity. Um, oh, this didn't get formatted pretty. They have a 4.0 deploying. The client is already installed. They see this in their installer log prompt for source. Failed to resolve source to there. 
failed while prompting the source, so they couldn't find the 4 web. As a extra, I put four clients supported. I don't. So it's trying to find. It needs the XE to launch. Yeah, it's is, trying... is, is this coming up from? I'm seeing a managed bootstrapper. Is this coming up during the prereq BA? Planned. No, because it's actually installing their planned packages, their own packages. See here. So I think he, here he says I put the client version support framework of 4.0. So he supported the he base. I think his BA came up because it already supported the client framework. Right. So it was able to get up. I'm trying to find where the net effects is in the planning. I wish this had gotten formatted better. Ah, uh, here it is. Next is absent, present, requested, install. Right. So it wants it. And it's going to, as marked as not caching it. That makes sense, I guess. So it, it's trying to install the four. This is fine. This is expected because this, well, It doesn't. Yeah, it's it, Jake is bringing up the point, which is what I was saying is that yeah, it's the NetFX four should be. I mean, if this is the full bundle, which I think it is, right? NetFX four, yeah, that's full. So this is the full web bundle. So it found the client, it detected that you have you need full, and it's going to try to install full, and they need to provide the full. And for whatever reason. It's not in their installer, or their BA is not telling it to go download from the internet, which is where it would go. So, in the end, I don't. This is a BA. I think, it, and if it's a custom BA, their BA is not returning go download from internet correctly from the on prompt source prompt. Does that make sense, Bob? Or do I need to be more coherent? Um. So this oh, is. The, I see. Sorry, this sorry, is the sorry. default location where it needs so. The client, the the user has client profile. Their install says they want full profile. So this installer is going to launch in client, be fine, and then install full. So it needs the full installer, and in this case, it's the web installer. But that doesn't matter. So they need to provide .NFX full, you know, setup exe. And I'm pretty sure that we have a URL for that. That if you tell the burn to don't load. Don't try to lo you know find it locally. Go ahead and look remote. It will go and download it from the internet for you. But so their BA is not saying that. Right. The They're, BA needs to trigger that. That's right. Their BA has to say yes. I allow you to go to the internet. Yeah. Okay. So they are they are using the the web uh, package, which is that's the .NET mm -hmm. effects. But it doesn't a, matter. Yeah. I mean, at this point, like using the web one just means that they're going to go download the web one from right. the web. Right. Sorry. I, I don't think it matters whether it was no. uh, requested or not, it, yeah. or detected or not. It was. Right. Uh, it, it just. It, that or the a, user didn't copy the full CD, and this file needs to be on their CD somewhere. Because <laughs> uh, it is on the desktop now, so who knows? Anyway, this is not a burn issue. It's a BA needs to decide what it wants to do in this case. Right. But everything is behaving exactly as I was would anticipate. <sighs> All right, onward. Performance counters should do 64-bit. OK. Well, this, they're call, this is calling load CTR. The question is, do we need to call 64-bit load? CTR. Oh yes, right. That's what it says. Launching a 32 bit. I could see that. So instead of this one, we need to do the the other one, the 64 bit one. Yeah, I could see that being true. Yeah, uh, that seems like a bug. 
I just saw ex our extensions, the very few extensions we have that have to do 64-bit as I was looking at all the MEF stuff. Right. So anyway, that, it does not surprise me if this is missing. So yeah, good luck. Could be fixing 3x, I think. Probably, yeah. Okay. Burn command prop engine acts very weird. It accepts it accepts escape double quotes in the value. It creates a billion. Oh no. <laughs> oh, and then the comment about the uh, escaped. Or not an no, escape. No, we must have a test case for that. I'm sure there's a test case for that. Because I tested a lot of these scenarios. I remember we ran into a problem with with property values and uh, spaces. Uh, so that kind of doesn't surprise me. All right. Well, this is definitely a bug. Yeah. Reference project full path property with it. Reference project full path property full with error message. 2012 pro 36 updated 37. Add a reference to a .NET 4 project. Get this. I don't know. <laughs> the located assemblies manifest definition. Uh, this is going to be another one of your bugs fixed by moving to a new MEF? MPF? Yes, sorry. Ma MPF, not MEF. <laughs> yes, MPF. MEF head. Thanks. Um, uh, Wave hands. I have no idea. All right. Three X. Yeah. Put it in votive and say go. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I mean, clearly it's votive. It's clearly votive. Um, I've not seen reports of this other than this bug, so All right. it, it can't be completely broken. All right. Cool. Let's look at that in the future if you're not taking it right now. Yep. There's no way to prompt for missing sources from patch bundle. What? It's impossible to prompt the user for a valid value. It seems simply it swallows all child pops up steps. Oh, if, if your MSI package prompts for source? Install main bundle with, uh, with some product. Install patch bundle that contains patch for that product. Remove, rename, original patch bundle file. Launch main bundle and add product to be installed. Add, yeah. yeah. It's prompting for source. The MSI is prompting for source. Remove, rename, original patch bundle file. Launch main bundle, add product. No, I don't think this is MSI source. I think oh. this is um, because the patch bundle is registered as an add-on, Oh, it's going to go try to, re but it's going to repair from the cache. Well, launch the main bundle. It doesn't matter in the end of bundle. Yeah, launch it from the cache. It doesn't matter because the main bundle is going to find the add-on patch bundle and try to do something. It's interesting that the installation would hang when it comes to patch bundle source prompt. Oh, I don't know what that means. I don't exactly either. Yes, three breaks the cache. That Jacob's bringing up the point that three breaks the cache. Um, and the question is, can the main bundle? What should the main bundle do when the finds that one of its add-on or patch bundles is can't be broken from, or can't be found because the cache is broken? And I agree that the the BA must be some C sharp BA. Um, I don't actually know what happens in this case off the top of my head. I don't know what the main bundle does when it can't find the add-on bundle to launch. It's bad that it would hang, but who knows? 
um, yeah, we should take this in 3x, go root cause it, and figure out what's going on. Sure. I'm not sure we have a test case for that. Setting MIME. If you set MIME, works on IS, but not IS 7.5. OK. Would not surprise me. <sighs> IS 7 stuff. Yeah. Oh, not IS 7 or 7.5. Oh, I thought it was just a question of 7.5. No, it's just 7. It, it's the new, the old metabase works, the new one doesn't. So we should go take that and take it 3x easily. Progress. Yeah. Oh, look, another one of these. Didn't we take a bug of this before? Yeah. This one is. No, this one's different. They're different, but the same. But yeah. Anyway. Well, anyway. yeah, different, different. I. <laughs> the probably the same root cause being IS. Um, IS configuration. The other one was talking about. Was it failed to find? Um. It was it was actually a failure message coming from the custom action rather than a generic failure coming from MSI or from IIS rather. I would love to have this fixed. I don't know what we're going to do. It's been open for a long time, and these are in. I yeah. I I have no answer. We we should take the bug. We should try to fix it in three X. Yep. Um, Honestly, with these bugs, I'm starting with these type of bugs. I'm starting to get to the point where I'm like, we'll just go write the stupid IS metabase ourselves, avoid their whole transaction brokenness, <laughs> and deal with whatever else we have to do when we have to do that. When some new code is added by XML config, it messes with the formatting. Well, now something like this. I don't know. How do you tell? You have a limited amount of control over how you can reformat stuff without yeah. doing lots of white space manipulation. Right. You know, honestly, right. yeah, we could take it. Uh, you could put it in 3x. It's not a breaking change, I don't think. And yeah. it would be nice if it did better. I totally agree. It seems adding a node is going to be problematic, especially. Well, you can you can go through the whole DOM, ask for all the white space, figure out the white space for the preceding node. Um, when you oh, add yeah. yours, add the appropriate white space, use the same white space, things like that. You can do it. Yeah. I've uh, done it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of tedious work, and that's going to be a native code. So, yes. Properly with read-only files. Okay. I thought we did that. Eric added that ages ago. Um, how will we put it in 3.8 to look at that? And then, if not, then go ahead. I'm 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 okay with that. And and if it's not there, then make it a feature and go. Cool. That works. Would not surprise me if someone fixed this and didn't know that there's a bug open. I've found that I was doing that recently. Mm -hmm. It cannot be run when assembly name has dots. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, there should at least be an error message because I do agree that would be pretty maddening. Yeah, we should take that three X. Okay. I mean, either either it should work, or we should tell you it's not going to work. <laughs> we should not do something in between, which is, well, we'll try and then not work with really crappy error message, probably. Well, generally, that's going to be the, I couldn't load it. Yeah, which is not going to help you understand why. Yeah. Besides, we can tell very quickly, yes, we made it work, or no, that will never work. <laughs> Uh, VS 2012, other versions not tested. Create a project, create an empty file, show all files, build in Visual Studio, right click the new include in project. Because it's an empty file, it's invalid. It should be displayed as the same icon as product up here. Build doesn't report any errors because it's not including any calls down line. Wow, cool! Sounds like a great bug to fix. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is just uh, motive doesn't support the 
all files, including project machination that they want to support here. Yes, I'm sure. It's just probably one more way that you can add files in Visual Studio. It's not like they've got 30. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, I, I sure. Either this should work or it shouldn't be allowed. I'm okay with that. Tabs and data fields not always propagated. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, this I agree with this. We should fix this bug. I agree. We have to go look at those options and do the right thing. Okay. I, I mean, it shouldn't... Uh, yeah, we cannot have tabs ending up in the IDT and all that kind of yeah. stuff. It's just bad. Yep. Bad, bad, bad. And I think we've done this fairly haphazardly, so it may be that we need to be more whatever. Makes sense. Include append as an action. I agree, we should handle a pen. Seems like a completely reasonable thing to do. All right, if I hit refresh, are my bugs going to move? Some of them. All right, we're going to... You okay to go for another 10 minutes since we started a little late? Well, works for me. All right, 3876. 3876. All right, here we go. Cannot install 37 on 64 bit without seeing error. Oh. That's not good. All right. Um, I'm curious. Um, I'm going to try to pop this open real fast because this may be an issue I know about. Yes, this has been fixed. This is the magical, this is fixed in 3.8. This was this very, very challenging bug to track down where we would get fail to move verified file from payload path, and it's because we were getting a file not found returned in a case where the documentation said only directory not found should be, or uh, path not found should be returned or something like that. Anyway. Okay. So that's what this was, and it was brutal to track. I, I ended up someone. I actually had to work with someone directly. Actually, it was through Fire Giant that we actually got one of our customers back and forth, like back and forth. Finally, we got the process monitor log and tracked it down, and it was. It's really happy with that. In the end, the advantage of having close customers that are there that it can work back and forth directly. It was awesome, and send you everything because you're under NDA with them. <laughs> yeah, that helps. It does. Um. All right. Can't. Comp Pile the following. Um, that seems pretty clear. Although they're trying to make it capitalized, maybe you should. Oh, boot the. Uh, mm. Is that yeah? Is that legal to specify, you know, two short paths? Yeah, see, they're trying to make one compliant and one lowercase, which I saw people doing back in the old days. I don't know that anybody does this anymore, but um, oh. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head at the look. I'm not quite set up here yet for that. Is it going to open here? Yes, it is. All right, fine. Um, directory table, MSI. Yeah, that one. Um, defaulter for non root source dot. Yes, I want defaulter. Does it allow it on both sides? I think it does. Continue. If file I name identify that is used to, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> oh, 
uh, file name, which I think is the one that gives me the yeah short and long. Um, bah. Oh, there it is. Yes, there it is. Colon, right? So target name, source name. And then long and short. So yeah, you can. You can do short and long and source name. So technically speaking, you can do that. Hmm. And you I can. guess the fact that the case is different. That's what they want. Yeah. That's what they want. Um, yeah, it is actually really interesting. The error being thrown is from uh, okay. there's an actual check for. Um, oh, I see. Uh, so the the check is again short name versus short so, uh, short name against short source name and long name against long source name. Right. Um, so that, that error should, you know, this really should be, um, it seems like this should be, you know, uh, da, 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 da. you know, check these. If they're exactly the same, print out a, a warning. If they're different, let them go through kind of thing, I think. So I, it's, I, it's a 3x bug. It's a relatively straightforward bug to fix, I think, in the end. Basically, we have to loosen our error checking a little bit. Yep. And hardly anybody cares because nobody does this. Right. <laughs> no, right. Wix 3.6 requires .NET 2.0. Yeah, I think this is a this is actually going to turn into a bigger and bigger problem. You're probably going to want this, if not in 3.8, probably in 3.9. Because we're sneaking by, but it's going to become more and more of a problem. Because a lot of the the um, actually no, you know what? This is going to not be a problem three nine, because you're going to cut two thousand eight, which means you could then move to four zero for everything. The Wix toolset is currently built against the three five framework, three two zero framework. I forget which one, so it can be loaded in Visual Studio two thousand eight. Right. Which means you need the .NET framework two zero. However, our installer installs the two zero framework. Um. And if you only have 4.0, there are still cases where we need 2.0 or something like that. Yeah, I remember. Especially, uh, there's a, there's a fair bit of code. I know in Heat. Oh yeah, it, it's this. Yeah, see, we end up depending on some part of MS Build 2.0. Yep. Right. And that's the problem. Yeah. So yeah, this is a bug. Um, it will go away if you move to 4.0 and 3.9. You, I, I, I don't know what to do here. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm fine with. Um, we could make you could add a block. You know what? Honestly, the best thing would be is to add a block in three eight. Don't you think? Add a block. But you know, put a condition in the three eight installer to say if we don't detect two zero to fail. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the right. I'm like, how does that fix something? Oh no, it just prevents it. It, it, well, um, yeah, doesn't fix um, it. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, you're right because we, the BA would install, the prereq BA would install 4.0. Is that correct? Mm, yes, Wix toolset will install 4.0 if it doesn't find anything. Okay. And I would say you could install 2.0 or 3.5, except that we need the whole logic that handles the crazy. 3.5 prompt thing on Windows 8 and all that stuff, which would be another awesome feature if we had that, but we don't have that in Burn today. Or whatever we're going to do there. Yeah, so for, for 3.8, we can block. Um, for 3.9, remove all the 2.0 support. I would, yeah, I would probably go that way. Oh. Although you might want to check and see if 2.0 is always required, or if there's just some features that need it, and at that point, then it gets fuzzy. Yeah, well, I know, again, I know Heat, and I think assign, Wix assign culture, that's really interesting. Actually, you know, another option would be to build that, that build the MS, build the tasks twice. 
could build one for 2.0 and one for uh, 4.0. Yeah. And load the appropriate one in the 2010 targets versus the. That might even be a better way to go. Because yes, then you would only get MS this. Build 2.0. The only way you would get the 2.0 stuff is if you had MS Build 2.0, and which means you had .NET Framework 2.0, and then that is a you know self fulfilling prophecy. If we want to continue to support CLR 2. I'm saying in 3.8. Right now. Um, the 4.0 build has a dependency on 2.0, and if 2008 support is going to go into the future, this is going to become more of a more of a problem potentially over time. That's all I'm thinking. Um, yes, I, I do know the MS build uh, tasks are problematic uh, because we do have things that require. No, it's when we want to add things that require uh, MS Build 4 support mm -hmm. yep. that we run into weirdnesses. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm leaning toward removing support in 3.9. Well, no, I, I'm fine with that. I'm talking 3.8. Right, I understand. Um, and at the very least, I agree we should block um, if if we can see my concern there is, is doing it is actually getting sufficient coverage because you know who doesn't have CLR for um, but it's worth investigating it's worth investigating it's your call I don't know what it does to the release there but anyway it's something that could I think those are the two reasonable options right now yeah um, my only concern there is whether doing that would break anyone who's using our instructions for uh, daily build integration. Mm, no, because they should be pulling in Wix.targets, right? That's true. If we do it all in Wix.targets, we're okay. Well, and Wix.targets does the auto-detect. It does the drop-back, which then, as long as you have the assigned cultures tasks loaded inside the appropriate targets, it should work. Yeah. The hard part is the build machinations to get, you know, the Wix test built twice and that yeah. kind of stuff. It's not horrible. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I will look into that. It's the best solution. And the only reason I bring it up is that if Visual Studio 2008 is going to survive for another number of years, you know, a few more years, and people start upgrading to 2000 or Windows 8 from Windows 7, it probably gets a bigger and bigger problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh scheme of documentation for a component says directory path instead of directory name. Hmm, okay. There's an yeah. easy bug. Yeah. I, and it's email from, I assume I'm that Rob. There aren't many other Robs on Wix, is there? I don't think so. Yeah, there used to be a couple, uh, Hamlet, Hamlet, uh, or something like that, but Yep, yep. Haven't haven't seen him around lately. Uh, does not appropriately handle abort, retry, ignore. Uh, that's not. Could be true. Um, it might be fixed too, but. Yeah, anyway, yeah, someone should look at that. Because we do have to interpret those things and pass them back to the Windows installer. And I remember having a problem in this area, so that might be true. Okay. Um, one more bug. 2010 cannot open projects after upgrade to... Oh, that's not RTM. Is it? Well, maybe it is RTM. No. Um, pre -RTM. It's very, very close. Downgrading to 1204? Oh, really? Oh, okay. I don't care. Because if you go from 3.6 to 3.7, it's fine. It's when you go from a 3.7 build to a 3.7 build, it didn't work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, I remember this. It's the package dev stuff. Oh. That yeah, I yeah, yeah. added and then reverted. And then the people that got caught in between got screwed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you for dog fooding. You were a wonderful person. Thank you for finding bug. 
and we're sorry you got caught in the middle. So your bug is fixed by, uh, I don't know, doing all that. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway. Cool, call it there for a day. So that bug can be closed, right? As in, we don't care anymore because that doesn't happen? Resolution dog food. Resolution dog food, I like it. Oh, and and maybe, it's, you know, well, I guess we don't care. Yeah. At a certain level, I want to pat that person on the head and say thank you very much for trying to be very helpful. Yes. Um, cool, there we go. An end of another triage. I don't know how many bugs we got through, but um, if I hit refresh, I'll just do all untriaged, 631 from what? That was about 20 bugs based on this. And if all I, these... I still have a few open. Yes, yeah, so... But only five. One, two, three, four, five from the looks of it. So that would get us down to 626. All right. Well, I guess that's some progress. Maybe yeah. we'll break under 600 um, if we do triage again next Tuesday. So on that, unless you guys have anything else, I'm going to wrap it up. And I hope you all have a wonderful uh, tomorrow, I guess, which is a day of work for most of us, and then weekend for everybody else. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.